Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to EDUSAT live lectures. Dear friends, today in global environmental conflicts we will be talking about water quantity and quality issues. To discuss this topic we have with us our subject expert Dr. Chera Shri Ghosh. Dr. Ghosh is Associate Professor in Department of Environmental Studies, University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome ma'am to our studios and request her to start the lecture. Welcome ma'am. Good afternoon. We will start with the topic water. Water is a universal solvent. We all understand that it is a need of everyone's life and it is a cause of human existence. So, it is a unique in nature because it is amphoteric in nature. Amphoteric means that it is a acid in properties and also basic in properties. So, that uniqueness create a very interesting chemistry or understanding as a solvent. We will start how we get water. Water in three state we can get solid, liquid and gaseous. Water in every atmosphere of our ecosystem or environment that means atmosphere, hydrosphere and lithosphere and also the core of our ecospheres that is the biosphere within the human body. The different physical processes like uh, condensation, evaporation, precipitation or the percolation, these are all different physical processes churning the water in different sphere and in some way it is all also deposited in form of either liquid or gaseous or as a solid ice cap. So, importance of water if we understand for our survivability or sustainability, then we must understand the problem right now we are facing. We all know the cause of water issues related with the climate change. So, climate change if you are having then direct impact on the climate change is on the water. So, in last 100 years water consumption has increased sevenfold. So, this is one of the biggest consumption and then what happened the population is also simultaneously increasing. So, that two major factor creating a huge depletion of water level and in water table and creating a major problem. If we go back to the water availability and distribution, we always understand that water is everywhere, but still whenever we talk about water availability, definitely we are in a scarcity. If we think about the first layer of water availability, 97 percent water in the ocean and then 3 percent only the fresh water for available water, what we can consume. If in the, within the fresh water, we can find out that in the solid state, 79 percent in the ice caps and glaciers, ground water is 20 percent. So, again only 1 percent available as a surface fresh water. Similarly, in the down the line accessible surface fresh water, it is distributed in different places. So, ultimately that is the major threat for us, the available water, not the water total natural resources. We are have, we having four major worries that we are very poor in management globally also and nationally. Then high population growth, then rapid urbanization process which is a big threat for the global threat, urbanization process increasing and the variability of the precipitation and rainfall. We all understand ENSO cycle is changing, so water precipitation pattern is also changing. So, that is one the dimension is creating an impact on the water mismanagement. So, increasing water crisis group gripping the world and the major understanding of depletion and contamination leads to the quality and quantity. So, we have a big problem somewhere quantity leads to the quality also, what we are going to address today. So, major information we know that 
the anthropogenic factor like human being, we are obviously taking that natural limited natural resources in it taken for granted. So, not given the due respect, not preserved properly, then we have a absence of mechanism in different country, different state wise, spatially, temporarily, then failure on the part of public and government sector. If we understand the total surface and subsurface water body, because water as we discussed earlier that they are available in every sphere of the ecosystem. So, we must understand first which form we are getting, getting the water, first is the surface water, then the subsurface or ground or ground water. The bodies we feel that way the static and the flowing water body, so ponds and lakes are the static bodies, streams and rivers are the flowing water bodies. So, they are also undercoming under the surface sources. Underground sources, dug well, tube well, springs, whatever is happening, they are inside the underground. So, they are not within the reach easily. The in case of India, as an Indian perspective, if you think about the surface water resources, then definitely you have to understand the annual surface runoff from where it is coming. It is the rainfall and the snow melt which is estimated to be about almost 2000 billion cubic meter. And out of this 2000 billion cubic meter, 37 percent is actually mobilized. So, it is available for us. The major problem is that we have a huge annual flow of water from the Himalayas, but it is only for the short duration that is 4 months. And the the flow of the water or the amount of the water is coming from the Himalayas, we cannot properly preserve or conserve them because we do not have the storage capacity. So, that is one of the limitation we are facing for having a, the huge runoff to manage. In case of groundwater resources in India, we are having a different types of annual Richard zone. In India, we are also in the similar pattern of surface runoff we are having 30 percent of the groundwater potential, only we can tap for the irrigation and domestic use. So, one of the quite good amount of water is going for the domestic and agriculture purpose. We have to understand whatever water resources we are using that is coming out as a waste water. So, that is one problem and threat for the natural resource limitation. If we take an example of uh, Haryana, Punjab and Delhi, they have already exploited not the 30 percent, it is almost the 94 percent of the water from the groundwater resources. And slowly, slowly many other states of our country, they are obviously depend on the groundwater resources, not having surplus water in the surface water. So, they are in the verge of replenishing the level of water table. So, this is one water resource scenario if we discuss on and the based on the Center Water Commission that we are having a huge amount of rainfall 3000 BCM below billion cubic meter. We are having a precipitation, we are having the runoff, but still we are availability of water is less because we are having the different types of water. We, we are not conserving or reserve in the different reservoirs. So, we have a per capita water availability is 1720 cubic meter. In our country, which is a diversified country, we are having a different topography, we are having a different types of climatic regime. So, what happened? We are having a different range of rainfall that we all understand. So, we although we are having a huge amount of rainfall throughout Indian national statistics, but we can see through that we are in the same time, some places are under the drought and some places are under flood. So, the major problem the diversity of this water availability that is 100 millimeter in the Rajasthan, whereas the similar time we are having 11,000 millimeter in the Meghalaya. So, this changing of the rainfall pattern which is already proven due to the climatic pattern change and creating a different topography and the different lifestyle activities and the industrial activities. Now, the pattern of water rain the monsoon pattern is changing and ultimately climate change is influencing the rainfall and ultimately it is limiting the water resources in different specially. 
If we go for the underground water resources, definitely first thing will come that we are depend directly on the water table beneath our land. So, water table is the upper level of the aquifer. Then we have the zone of saturation that means the area where we are having sufficient water. So, it is the water is moisture is there. Above the zone of saturation we are having unsaturated zone. So, level of water table dictate the presence of zone of saturation and zone of unsaturation. Aquifer is the below the water table, it is a deposit of water beneath the surface. So, layer of porous substances which contains and transmit the ground water below and it can it is a one of the underground reservoirs. So, if this is the structure we can go through that we are having confined aquifer then above this is an impervious layer of rock which is not available directly, then we have an unconfined aquifer, then we are having the saturated zone of water, then water table and ultimately in the above we are having unsaturated zone. So, plant or any vegetation are depend on depend upon this type of water ground water below availability. If we come back to the availability of Indian river basin, we are really rich in water in some of some of our time. We are having almost 9 river basin starting from Chenab from north to the Kaveri basin in the south and Narmada to Brahmaputta. So, and again similarly the problem lies the availability of the depth of the water. This picture shows very clearly about the north and north north east western side of our India where we are having the huge depletion of the water level. It is started from 20 meter to the 40 meter and that is the reason northern India is under huge stress of water and creating a huge problem for the agriculture and the aquaculture. If we try to find out why it is so then definitely it comes that overdraft or overuse. So, if we are lowering our water table, it is depend upon the deep drilling and it depend, depend upon the rate of we are drilling or we are excavating the water from the beneath the ground. So, in case of if you think as a Punjab as a role model or case, then we study, then we can find out in 1979 itself that has already shown that 10 meters dropped in case of Punjab the ground water level. And right now if you find out it is above than 40 meter. So, it is it is causing the permanent degradation of water table or water layer in case of northern India. So, that means the common pool of resource what we generally call the ground water resources are now faces the tragedy of commons. It is very important that we cannot overdraft the resources without understanding the level of their deposit inside. Another cause that is rural areas. Whenever they are getting the we are the agricultural based country, now farmers are getting electricity subsidies. So, they allow to farmers to pump ground water for the cheaply and resulting in the exploitation of the water resources beneath and ultimately when it is not replenished by the proper rainfall. So, then the dearth of the management is happening. So, another reason the farmers are using water intensive crops in case of the water scarce area. So, this is one of the major reason we are now getting the case study of Marathawada region where the problem of water the famine is there and drought is there. So, that is one way we are very much uh, it is a problem for our country. Third point we can find out the urbanization process a very rapid urbanization process is increasing all the urban and semi urban areas and that is limiting the ground water resources. So, once the population increasing they are when the water table finished then they are going to the aquifer region. So, popu the population or the demographic profile is the more that time is one of the major cause of the depletion rather than the climatic factors. And the last one is the concretization due to the urbanization process. So, we are blocking the recharging zone of the urban areas or semi urban areas. So, creating a huge obstruction for the percolation process of the precipitation which is generally normally in every 
year after their annual sufficient rainfall they are increasing the water table and the recharging zone so that is one way the again a problem of anthropogenic problem issues then we change the topic to another resources that totally the problem created by the human being that is water pollution water pollution can be two type first is the the point source another is the non point source now in point source is the where from which sector the pollution is coming out we have we all understand that india being agriculture based country we are being a source of agriculture can be one practices uses of the water then which is the major uses of the water then we are having industry then we have a domestic so the whenever the water used water are coming out from the direct sources then definitely it known as the point sources and whenever there is a rainfall or some way the runoff which is coming from the different sources and it is a mixed cluster sources then it known as non point sources so agriculture runoff and urban runoff are the major part of this non point sources there are different types of parameters for water as indices we can classify them as a physical chemical and biological so three groups mainly if we talk about the the temperature if we talk about the the transparency or turbidity it comes under the physical there are all the organic and inorganic elements or the compounds and the nutrients that are coming under the chemical and the pathogens the bacteria the virus the different types of protozoans they are coming under the biological parameters so water contaminants in another way we can classify as a organic water pollutants pesticide microorganism food processing waste and volatile organic compounds that is vocs they are coming under the water organic water pollutants then inorganic water pollutants heavy metals acidity caused by the industrial discharge and then nitrate phosphate different types of solid particles they are inorganic water pollutants and we have having a different mode of contaminants that is the petroleum radioactive pollutants and thermal pollution that is the heat generated by the industry and the warm water coming to the water body and creating a thermal pollution in the water so ultimately it's a holistic problem is coming under the threat for the survivability of the biota if we talk about the quality definitely we have to think about the potable water that means the drinking water so clean drinking water is essential for the human being and all the life forms so drinking water is sufficiently should be high quality compared to the other usage like domestic and industrial we have to be very much cautious about the what we are consuming because that otherwise going to risk our life for different types of cause of diseases so quality in terms of quality must be acceptable quantity must be sufficient so there are a different country globally and nationally they are creating different types of standard because there is no compromise we can do with the standard with the drinking water so in case of europe they are following the european drinking water directive usa they are following the epa environmental protection agency drinking water guidance so under the act of safe drinking water act china ministry of environmental protection australia they are having the national so country specific standard is available who is guidelines is obviously for all the countries without any legislative or administrative framework or also for the countries those are having their own standard india we are following the bureau of indian standard in the drinking water specifications we'll discuss right now on the water quality index what is water quality index the thing we have to understand that whenever we are monitoring different parameters either physical chemical or biological there are some numerical values are coming but the people is very much it's difficult for them to understand the problem the quality in terms of the quantity or numerical values so what we are doing here and under the environmental protection agency guidelines along with the canadian council of ministers of the environmental water quality index what they do they complex water quality data 
they are created in a color code the people of general public awareness then they can understand the usable the values of the water quality so it should be a criteria of this index is should be a single value first of all then they have a can influence the different water quality parameters they can find out the rate of human consumption based upon this value and definitely it varies between the temporarily and spatially that means in the location and time so if we are understanding our local water quality we can understand the global issues also so it follows the thinking process of agenda 21 that is think globally act locally in this case of water quality index we are having a uh, almost nine test that is starting from uh, dissolved oxygen which is very much limiting factor for the water study fecal coliform which is another limiting factor then uh, for the drinking water ph then bod biochemical oxygen demand then temperature total phosphate nitrate turbidity that is the transparency or, or the opaqueness define the quality of the water then total solids what about the solutes or the the solid materials are coming in, in the water and creating the water unpalatable so ultimately this nine separate test value we are using in this formula and ultimately we are interpreting the quality of the river stage in terms of the water quality index and this value through this mathematical interpretation and by different way of uh, weighing the vectors then we can understand the result value and then we put it in the range of water quality index and that is very depend upon the availability of the range of values so starting from very bad then bad then medium then good ultimately excellent i just want to go through the simple form of the steps we are following this calculating this water quality index we are following the relative weight one values is there we have to calculate then quality rating skill then sub index how to do and ultimately these three things when we find out from the numerical parameter monitoring values then we can summarize, summarize the values and then we can get this water quality index what is weight weight is uh, according to the relative importance of the overall quality of the drinking purposes so each parameter they are having a importance within the water quality so that is varies between the 1 to 5 then the relative weight is calculated based upon this parameter values then we are having the quality rating scale qi comparing the quality of water in comparison to the water standard then we are having the sub index and the sub index can be calculated based upon the qi value and based upon its overall values we can calculate the categorization of the water in that form thank you all we are right now going to discuss on the urban water footprint this is one of the important uh, scenario we are now understanding as we discussed earlier that urban is a issue of water demand is increasing and un estimates that 40% above the indian population are living in the urban areas and it can, it is going on and it's not the scenario only in india globally almost 50% people will go for urbanization process under this 
till 2030. Once we are increasing that urbanization process is creating a pressure on the area, then definitely we are having a deficiency of the basic amenities. So, water, sanitation and power supply. So, now who are coming? That is the environmental refugee. How they are coming? Because they are under the problem of stress of climate change. Whenever a place or locality or any country they are under threat of climate change, the people are losing their livelihoods, they start moving or migrating from that place to the other place. Some way it is the transboundary migration, sometimes it is uh, obviously depend on the rural to urban migration. They are known as environmental refugees. And the first target of natural resource they are under stress that is the water. If you think about the natural and anthropogenic limitation in the urban water cycle by this model, we can find out CT in the core heart of this model. We are having a two input that is natural flow of water, another is the political flow of water. The, that means the transboundary water linking the waters are coming from the one state to another. So, that is that way that it is depend on the other source of the water from other state. Again, the rainfall which is natural resource precipitation and the groundwater depletion which is going for different places and depend upon the extraction and the percolation process balancing the act. Now, migration in another pressure is coming from that part along with the downstream impact of the wastewater. Once the population will increase, definitely there will be increase on the wastewater generation. Uh, once the wastewater generation will increase, they will going for the to the com contaminating the natural water resources. So, ultimately all input and output of all the pressure will create a major problem in the urban water cycle. Urban water supply if you think about this way, they first do the supply water and the sanitation are important. Now, if there is a demographic or population increase, demand of the drinking water also increases. So, once the demand of the drinking water increases, it is, it is going to influence the depletion of the different water, natural potable water resources. Then from there, the 80 percent of the water will come out as a domestic use or as a waste water. Now, the municipal waste supply. So, once you are generating wastewater, it is also coming out from the different community level. So, and along with the domestic wastewater, we are having the industrial discharges. So, 70 percent of the urban population already are under threat for the drinking water problem and also 38 percent of the urban population has a lack of services. So, we have to understand the water quality also lead to the some way the impact the health and sanitation of that area. We are having some statistics that generally the model shows that if you are having a sewage generation in a place of 100 percent and that treatment capacity of that area which is energy dependent and that treatment capacity is almost 50 percent. So, la the other 50 percent where it goes? It goes directly to the different water bodies or land areas. And that is creating a major pressure on problem to the urban pollution and creating a major health crisis. Now, if we are having a generating the drinking water supply to the urban areas and wastewater generation also simultaneously we are increasing. So, additionally what happened that total result of this wastewater those are untreated that is creating a huge impact. So, the quality of the life of the urban poor as under the threat compared to the urban rich, those are having less access to the money. So, some way then the societal and economical pressure is creating major problem to the population due to the lack of money and the treatment facilities they are having or accessible coping strategy they are having their doorstep. So, we have to ask are we drinking safe water? So, definitely there are some reports are coming from different level of Delhi. If you take Delhi as a role model, that condition of Delhi, 
day by day, every day in the media it is coming that we are causing a problem and it is decreasing. Huge amount of money and if by through the different channels and different sources and funding agency, they are working on the, the reclamation of the water bodies like Yamuna or the different land, but still we can find out the last after having a, such a long investment, the water is remain same and we are having the same problem. So we are, everyone is concerned about the urban stretch of Delhi, Yamuna and that is creating the hi highest problem for the condition of the, worst condition of the river system and it is creating the huge problem for the water sanitation and health of the Delhi population. So we understand that if we are having sufficient rainfall, if we are having sufficient, the major challenge is for Delhi itself as a case study is the population. Now in Delhi we are urbanized, 93 percent population are urbanized. The population is expected by 2021, it is 22 million almost. Now in city itself, if you go through the census data, we can find out that day by day demand of water is increases. And so if last 10 years data we are going through, the last so every five years or four years, we can find out the water demand is very high. But if you go through the one last one year, two years of 2010 to 2011 data, we can find out that it is much, much higher. That means it shows the increasing trend. Another factor, urbanization, as we discussed, in case of area, Delhi is already limited, 1483 square kilometer. But we can find out last census data, the urbanization process, rural to urban formation is much higher compared to the urban to rural. So that means this is the one factor we have to address properly along with the population. And that impact we can find out the real statistical interpretation or the ge geological map, what it shows, if the changes from the 1960 to 2000, last 40 years was lesser than the 1998 to 2007. So depletion is much rapid and creating a huge problem for the, the water resources. If we go through the Central Groundwater Board resources data, that if we think about the nine district of Delhi, the over exploited district almost all except the two district north and central district. So these two districts are really not having that type of pressure rather than having the other all districts there under the critical stage. So if you think about the groundwater depth level, it is going down and it is depleting very fast and this is the reason we are having a huge problem of water shortage and scarcity. Every summer times, Delhi population and the, the lights, they are facing a huge stress on the water management. If you think about the north district, those are having uh, less water depletion due to this hydrogeology of Delhi. We can find out that their Jamuna flat plain area, they are having a higher water level. So for that reason, they, are, they don't have that problem of depletion very fast. So the re recharging zone is working. So now we have to understand what to do. We, if you go through the water quality index calculation, when we did it for the last uh, data from available data from Central Groundwater Board and we can we found that in terms of the nine district except three four district all are below 100 the required critical values. If the quality WQI level water quality index is above 100 the quality is better. If it is a below 100 quality is worse or under threat. So we can find out most of the places the quality is not good. So that means availability water is one reason, but the quality matters a lot when we think about the human well-being. So the last thing we can do, we have to do for our country or for each city to understand the urban water footprint. Our urban water footprint means the domestic population residing in an area and the demand of the water based upon the different contamination. 
I just wanted to show you here the major threat of drinking water arsenic, how it changes in different seasonal fluctuations, summer and dry season and wet season. So, every contaminants level are not unique, it is dynamic, it is changing season wise depend upon the dilution and the evaporation. Again another ground water problem and health issues fluoride which is also in Delhi very high. In dry season it shows how concentration is aggravating compared to the diluted time that is wet season. Option left we have to do rainwater harvesting. We all know that that is the only source we can again recharge our ground water level, we can increase the water table and ultimately we can be safe on that way recharging our zone. There are different method available, so you have to choose the basic method which is productive for our own understanding. Like we can have a recharge pit, we can have a recharge trench or tube well or soak ways. The technology will be suitable based upon the, the, the lithography of that soil area or the demand of the water or the type of the human habitants or built up area we are available. So, Delhi is a unique eco geography. One part we are having the flat plain area, another part is the arable desert area. So, nat naturally we have to think about the technology which is possible way. So, now the option left revival of the traditional rainwater harvesting system like Bauli and other things, those are traditionally used by the earlier days. Then we have to intervention water transfer, we can make a building cross pipelines, compulsory rainfall rainwater harvesting system. Then we must have more tanks for the saving the available water, clearing obstruction to the path of the water channel and ultimately and above all the first factor is the population control. Governance is also important because there are all bodies there to do, they are doing their job, central groundwater board and we are also having the easement act of 1982. That groundwater beneath the house is yours, so you have to save the water table. Simple solution like this I want to show to the audience that is concrete surface versus the porous surface. If we do not concretize the land then obviously it can be a recharge zone and there are many rules and acts are started from the 1986. We have to follow ultimately the regulatory measure, measures and that one report I want to highlight by the World Bank study that bottom up community management may be the only hope we are having not the regulation and other studies. So, we are already in the World Water Day celebration on the 22nd March it's for the public awareness and sensitizing the public and so the last message you take home is that individual action matter conserve to preserve. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, uh, in terms of uh, water preservation, how, how important is governance? How important is, for example, say regulating the water use? Yeah, the major problem uh, water you know never uh, our public think that it is a limited resource. As we are having rainfall, they are thinking that the natural way it will be replenished. But the structure, uh, the wise we are creating the problem what we discussed right now. That is creating a major problem imbalance between the recharging and the supply of the water in every seasonal cycle because as you know in our country we are agriculture based country, so we are rain fed agriculture, we depend on the monsoon. If monsoon disturbs we are having all disturbance in the system. So now if when the people are not understanding the importance of the water, so definitely government should come and implement the rules are there, already rules are there, we are having clean water act and we are having all sorts of acts are there, but the ignorance or sensitization that the reason I told that we found that we are having a sufficient rainfall. If we are not having the mandatory rain water harvesting system in the houses, the way that we are having the built up areas, we are covering the land, so that the reason we are creating a major threat or crisis for the urban level. So, definitely we have to make more sensitize the issues like right now we are doing with the air. Okay, ma'am, what is, uh, can you highlight the major findings of the World Bank report about water resources? In they, the they are, World Bank report actually they told about that the all the, you know, in that way we can understand that all the issues are government legislation act we are following from the 1981 when Central Pollution Control Board came 
and the state pollution control board created by for to conserve our resources by through the act but after all the act and policies we are having ultimately the report says that like if you compare our uh, system with the developed country why we are failure that is the major con problem is the human factor mm. all the natural resources it was always because the in each and every country of having a huge rainfall still there each house is there having the rain water harvesting system like ja you take about the example of germany or uh, other places the europe because they understand they unnecessary they are not going to dug the soil and to extra extra um, give that that water from the de the depleted resources so they want to bring back the water again where it was there so that means the understanding problem public awareness so we i uh, that was the message to the world bank whatever technology you bring here because we are updated with all the technologies in india mm -hmm. and science we also we are all understanding all the report and uh, analysis the problem lies the implementation mm. so definitely world bank is also asking that bring the community to participate with the government so that the reason the bhagidari and the stakeholder say word we are brought no regularly we are using it's not the scientist only job it's not the job of because they, they are the consumer if consumer not understand the problem it will be very difficult to supplies to do the job only for them true so there should be understanding corn the understanding the same way when they they start thinking and interlinking all the bodies like rwa so community level participation if started from the ground level definitely we can solve the issues of water hmm. what we are facing okay ma'am uh, uh, recently uh, since in fact past one year this interlinking of water basin or or river basins yes. of uh, interlinking of uh, say himalayan river the peninsular rivers and uh, there in number of concerns um, uh, which have been already voiced what do you think is, is the prospects and what do you think is the f uh, pitfalls for for such projects of interlinking of rivers to sustain water resources yeah it's a good uh, project but you know there are obviously debatable one we all why it is not succeeded till now can you just shed light why it's mm, debatable yeah now? yeah definitely i was discussing on the nine river basins okay so you know uh, as we told that uh, india is a diversified country we have a different biodiversity water is also where it is retained that is on the aquatic hydrosphere mm. or aquatic system now the problem is that every place they are having a different type of the soil because water in in between mid of the lithosphere and atmosphere so they are having all interaction with the atmosphere and also with the soil now that is the reason they are unique in every places now rivers are also different in nature the water if you are using the quantity then really comes the topic about the quality so if we link up all the water bodies or rivers in the together <coughs> based upon their pathway what it can also create a the diversity biodiversity because they are definitely will come with the all nutrients and all by the, the biota will carry forward from one state to another one river ecosystem to another river ecosystem so that is one way because our uniqueness is homogeneity is less compared to the other con country we are more heterogeneous compared to the other mm. country so sometimes when because the population having the livelihood so like if your river just for an example of delhi the yamuna starting from there and going to the agra you can find out the changes from the waziravat to the journey of okla so now if the we, the the river is coming from that side and again we are polluted it is becoming a kandan drain and going out there so that is one threat so if you're linking if you cannot make a one river sustain for a whole state or interstate then different river linking and if they are not in the same quality of the water or that with the diversified temperate climatic pattern and also the quality of the the soil and water quality then it can threat the biodiversity so the only reason of biodiversity sometimes and sometimes it is obviously the population you know as the human population will obviously aggregate uh, and they will start their settlement surrounding the river water so 
we still we are we have a huge conflict between the transboundary water movement. So, if we do not understand we can solve that issue first with a single water river linking will be a big issue for our country. So, uh, technically it is very right option is very good. But then there is it another um, issue with that, that the surplus in the river is for a limited amount of time, it is hmm. just for a monsoonal hmm. months and in that case also uh, all the rivers have surplus. Yeah. Pe even peninsula rivers have yeah. surplus, uh, surplus and uh, how, how do you think that? That is the reason the major problem starts in our country is the, the formation of the reservoirs from where because the limited time of monsoon. But I, what I feel you know that water is sufficient only the, the preservation of water. If we do first planning rather than going to the liver and linking is the first priority. If you the management rain water harvesting we did a many study throughout taking a Delhi as this case model. It is mandatory under the say clean development mechanism CDM program under the national climate action plan. But uh, the solid state of this rain harvest water harvesting it is not functional properly. So, if we can do start with our understanding like water tariff now it is increasing that is better. Governments are coming and understanding banning of the usage right now the 5 star and 3 star they have banned that they have to use the recycled water for other uses like gardening and other things. So, that type of small interpretation from the government rules can also do some better way rather than going that part because there are advantages, but there are disadvantages, these advantages also there. So, we have to think about it. So, rather than we can make a mandatory water harvesting or all the build the houses in the urban system, because we are repeatedly bringing the urban because rural already there the recharging is going on. Their major problem is the pesticide, their major problem is the contaminants. So, they do not have proper waste management system, what we are having. The we are major problem population and population is less in rural population is high. So, if we focus on the and uh, focus on the anthropogenic factor first human population their usage and the rules and regulation and then water recharging through the rain water system I think we can achieve almost 40 percent problem what right now we are facing. Okay. Because we can see right now it is a quite a good amount of rainfall throughout India. Why it is the flood? Only the there is a no da, storage, proper preservation. Like food crop also we are having huge production, but we cannot keep the thing for a longer duration. So then that is rotten, and then the scarcity of the food. So some way I feel that we can start with the preservation process and conserve and preserve is the first word we should address and take the all participation. That is much needed. Okay. On that note, I would like to thank ma'am for this very enriching discussion and thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you. Mm -hmm.